Hello and welcome to uh, TNT. Uh, we are excited, I am personally excited to be able to do uh, Awana this year and though it's not in person every week, I'm still excited to be able uh, to look at God's Word together, to be challenged by it, uh, to invite friends to join us, uh, to work to say sections and verses and just to grow this year. Um, my name is Pastor Noah and this is the TNT lesson video for uh, the 7th of October, the first uh, night that we are doing Awana this school year. Uh, and so TNT is for kids that are grades 3 through 6. Uh, I would certainly encourage you to have mom or dad or whoever's at home there sit down with you and watch the video. Uh, that's the more the merrier. You can have a little sibling or big sibling join you as well, as long as they're not a distraction uh, to you. Um, but I'm excited to be able to, to teach in this format Again, this will be posted every week, so that way if you're not comfortable coming in, uh, you have something to be able to be challenged by and to be working with us online. Uh, if you are comfortable coming in, there will be one week in the month that is the TNT week. And, uh, right now it's scheduled to be the third, Sunday, or the third Wednesday of each month, and so uh, we look forward to seeing you that week of each month. But uh, right now, we're, we are excited to be here doing Awana again in some capacity and in some fashion. And so uh, tonight, we're going to start in our start zone. Okay, we do the start zone every year uh, in Awana and TNT. It looks like this. Uh, if you're new to TNT, a special welcome to you. Uh, but this is the start zone for Awana. I'm going to try to put this on the website so that way you can download this uh, as a file and look at it at least, if not print it out and work through the questions as we go through it. Uh, but we're still working on how to get books and stuff to you, but at least for the first couple weeks, um, this is what we're in. So uh, it should be less of an issue. I think I can get it to you uh, on the website. But uh, the first page is just a simple sort of getting to know you kind of page. And then the next page jumps into... Uh, the first section. And so I'm going to look at the board here. I have written out what we need to do in order to pass the section. Okay. And so for us this week, the first thing that we have up here is we're going to answer these questions that are at the bottom of the page. So I'll come up a little bit closer so you can see this. But in, in each section we have, uh, in the start zone at least, there's two sections here in the start zone, you have the stuff to, to read and the verses you can look up. Um, and then these are the two questions for each, or for this page. There's two questions in this page, and then each page has appropriate questions at the bottom. It's either one or two. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do this actually together, all right? And then the next thing that you need to work to do is to, to memorize the, the memory verse for the week, which is Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, and, and we'll, t we'll look at that in the, in the start zone as well. And then the last thing that you need to do to officially pass the section is that you have to hop on the Zoom meeting. We're going to have an open Zoom meeting uh, for kids to be able to join with their parents or with the supervision of somebody at home. You're going to be able to jump on. You're going to find the right leader to, to listen to your section. You're going to be able to say the section to them uh, on the Zoom meeting, and then we'll, we'll give you the credit uh, for passing that section. And that's sort of how it's going to work. When you're in person, if you're comfortable coming in person, uh, instead of doing these things at home while you watch a video, you'll be doing them in front of me while we're teaching you uh, in the same way we usually do it. So if you're new to TNT, uh, welcome. It'll be a little bit different than normal TNT is. Uh, if you're returning to TNT, we're glad to have you back. And if you're brand new, just uh, because you want to check it out. Uh, we're more than excited that you are here with us. So I'm going to sort of just jump right in and talk about um, our lesson today. All right. I have a little object lesson that I'm going to use to kind of help us with this, um, just to kind of give you something to look at. But um, I'm going to set this aside. All right. The first question in our start zone is, uh, what did God create? Okay. What did God create? And so everything that we're going to talk about at TNT, everything that we're going to talk about at Awana, we believe, comes from the Bible. All right, this is my Bible. Okay, and so uh, if we look at the very beginning of our Bible, we see that God created absolutely, positively nothing. Right? No. No, it's the other way around, right? God absolutely, positively created everything out of nothing. 
okay? And so my object lesson over here, I have my phone. I'm going to show you this at a, at a different... Um, a different angle. I'm not that good at the camera work. I can't do these both at one time. So in our object lesson, I have water here. God created everything and he said it was good. Okay. And so our water here is going to represent uh, people. People were included in that. God created the first person, Adam, and then Eve. Okay. First two people and they were good. They were very good. All right. I can't imagine living in the Garden of Eden where they lived. But look at that water, it's pure, it's clear, it's good, all right? That's how the world began, and that's awesome, right? God created everything, it was good. And then, Adam and Eve were given some instructions, and one of those instructions was you can eat any of the, any of the fruit in the garden except for the fruit on that one tree, that one tree right over there. And guess what they did? They chose to eat from that tree. They chose to sin. Okay, so the next question there in your book is, what is sin? And what we do with sin, uh, we do this little thing, and if you know it, you can do it with me. If you don't, then you, you can do it on your own afterwards. Uh, sin is anything we think, say, or do that doesn't please God. Okay? So Adam and Eve had this perfect world that they were living in. Everything was perfect, and then sin entered the world because of Adam and Eve's decision to sin. And so I have with me here, I have pepper. And in our illustration over here, pepper is going to illustrate sin. Remember, this water represents the world that we live in as well as you and me. And so this world is full of sin. Full of sin. And I could just keep going because the world isn't getting better, right? The world isn't becoming perfect over time. The world is full of people, and people continue to sin. So our water here, representing, again, I think I messed it up when I said that the last time. It's not representing the world necessarily. It's representing people. All right, you, me, Adam, and Eve, we have sin in our lives. And now we have sin everywhere, all over the place, that we need to deal with, right? We need to deal with. And so we have to understand the Bible teaches us that everybody has sinned. Everybody. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, God's standard. God's standard for us was perfection. It was holiness. That's what holiness is, to be set apart from sin, to be perfect. And God is holy. And so Adam and Eve in the beginning were perfect. They met that standard because they were pure. But then sin entered when they made that decision. And now, obviously, as you can see from the water, they're not pure. You and I have sin. And the Bible tells us that all have sinned. And so that's a question there at the bottom of page five, at least my page five. Okay. And, and then the next question is, what do we need to be saved from? Well, you see, that sin that we all have earns us punishment. It earns us a penalty. And the penalty of our sin is death. Okay. The punishment of our sin, the penalty of our sin is death. And that death can be separation from God. And so separation from God for all of eternity is there's a place that, that is for people that are separated from God for all eternity, and that place is called hell. We believe that that is a real place, okay? A place that we can't necessarily go to right now, but a place that is real. The Bible talks about it as an actual place place. And so we need to be saved from that penalty of sin, the separation from God. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, were kicked out of the garden. And so even though they hadn't died, they were experiencing a separation from God that you and I can experience. Because I can't earn my way back to being good enough to be with God. All right. And so now we're going to flip to the, the page, the next page, okay, what do we need to be saved from? We need to be saved from the penalty of our sin, which is death. And then that, that next question there on page six, what did God do to save us from the punishment for our sin? What God did was he did an awesome, amazing thing, and he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross. So I'm going to look over here at my uh, pepper in the water. This, my finger here is going to represent Jesus Christ coming down and dying on the cross. 
So that didn't work very well. But you see how it kind of went out. Let me try that again. Boom. There we go. That was better. Fail on the first one. Jesus came and he dealt with sin. He pushed sin out of the middle. He, he made it no longer this huge barrier between us and God. He provided a way for us. Well, he provided, a, yes, he provided a way for us to have a relationship with God. To be in a relationship with a holy and a loving God. And that is amazing. He took the punishment that we deserved. Okay, and so uh, that's what God did. He sent a Savior to die on the cross, and that Savior was Jesus Christ. And then the Bible talks about faith. The Bible talks about faith. I put some important words up here. We've already talked about sin, okay? And this idea of faith means that we have trust, that we believe that what Jesus did, he came and died on the cross for our sins. He lived a perfect life because he was fully God and fully human, fully man. And he died on the cross for you and for me. And he rose again three days later. And he overcame death. So he took our punishment and he beat it. Right? He beat death in a sense. And so now if we have faith in him, when God looks at you and me, he no longer sees our sin as standing in the way. He sees our sin as dealt with by Jesus Christ because of what he has done. But we have to have faith in Jesus. Otherwise, God doesn't see Jesus Christ when he looks at us. He sees our sin, okay? And that's when we talk about this idea of grace. Grace is a gift that we couldn't earn. You know, I go to work and I earn a paycheck. I earn money for doing my job. Well, we can't earn salvation because, again, the Bible says that we've all sinned. And because we've all sinned, we all have to deal with this punishment. And the only way that we can deal with the punishment is realize that, hey, I'm a sinner and I'm not good enough. I'm not perfect. And turn and have faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what grace is all about. We're going to talk about these things throughout the year. Okay, I'm just touching on them real briefly today. All right. And then in our start zone, it also says, after what is faith, what happened after Jesus died? We already mentioned that he rose again. He defeated death, okay? And after he rose from the dead and, and walked around a little while here on earth, he actually rose into heaven. He ascended up into heaven where he now sits at the right hand of God, okay? So there's those questions, those answers. And then the last question there on the last page is, what must I do to be saved? And again, that goes back to faith. I have to believe that Jesus Christ did it on the cross for me, what I couldn't do for myself, all right? And that happens through uh, making a decision in your heart that you believe that. Sometimes we talk about praying a prayer, and there's nothing magical about the prayer, but the prayer involves something where you are communicating to God that you are a sinner, and you believe that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for you because of your sin, and you wanna place your faith and your trust in him. And if you've never done that, I can't encourage you enough to do that right now. If your mom, dad, whoever's at home is there with you, ask them about that. Because that is ultimately what is most important here at Awana, here at our church, and in this life. It's this relationship with God who loved you so much that he gave you this awesome and amazing gift that you couldn't earn. And through your faith in Jesus Christ, you can have that relationship with God. Here in this life before, while you live here, uh, but also, when you die, you have a relationship with God, and you get to be with God forever in heaven, and that's pretty awesome, all right? The last thing I want to point out here before I say goodbye is that here on this, this last page is the memory verse, okay? And so the memory verse for this week, I told you we were going to talk about it a little bit here. So Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, For it is by grace that you have been saved, again, a gift from God that saves us, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. And then he adds a couple of these words here. Not by works, so that no one can boast. And really that just means that you can't work enough, you can't do enough to earn salvation, or to earn the grace of God. It's a gift. And so I can't brag, that's kind of what boasting is, I can't brag about it, because it's not about me, it's about what God has done for me. 
And if I'm not explaining these, these words well enough there, most of them are here on this page explained for you. All right? So if you have any questions about anything I'm talking about today, I'd love to sit down and, and talk on the phone with you. Maybe you could email me. My email is pastornoah at communitybiblechapel.com. I'd love to be able to connect with you, to be able to, to talk to you about the gospel, which is the truth that we're talking about today, that Jesus Christ came, died, and rose again. And through faith and trust, you can have a relationship with God for the forgiveness of your sins. Uh, let me just pray and close our time together. Dear God, I thank you for TNT this year. I thank you for every kid that is watching, every parent, every guardian, every brother, sister, whoever, Lord. We thank you so much for what you've done for us in sending Jesus. We just pray that um, this time would be helpful to help us to learn and to grow in our faith and in our understanding of who you are. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me this week, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next week. And then in two weeks, hopefully we'll be able uh, to be face-to-face -face for those of you that are comfortable coming in. Thanks, and have a great day.